Okay guys, I did have one more thing when it comes to functions. This is advanced, okay? So uh, if you, you don't want to watch this, you don't have to watch this by any means. Uh, if you notice we have a function called move forward. And we've also talked about variables. We called int as an integer. And then we also said um, float was a uh, decimal value. So I'm going to use float. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the move forward function so that I can specify an amount of time that I want it to move forward right in the function itself. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to say float and then I'm going to specify a variable here. I'm going to call it wait seconds. You don't really have to remember this and it's just for a very short period of time you're going to use it um, as far as the variable wait seconds goes. And so um, now down here, I'm going to put wait, and then the amount of time I'm going to have it wait is whatever that variable is, as wait seconds. And that's it. It seems simple, but it really is a much more powerful way of writing your functions. Now down here, if I say move forward, I need to specify how long I want it to move forward for. So if I said three seconds, now what it's going to do is it's going to say move forward and then it has that three there and up here it's going to say okay move forward, uh, float wait seconds, wait seconds is going to be three. So whatever's in here is the variable you put in there, it's going to use that. When it comes down here it says wait, it's going to look for wait seconds. You put in three seconds so it's going to use three seconds. And uh, then if you wanted to say move, uh, you know, stop drive motors. And we could even take this, stop drive motors. We could take that out and put it inside of this function. Um, so you can have functions inside of functions. Um, and I'm not sure some programs you need to specify the function first before um, you include them in another function and some of them you don't. Uh, I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to put stop drive motors first. That function will be identified first and then right below it we'll have a uh, move forward function which is going to uh, move forward for the number of seconds that's entered and then it will stop. Uh, and so now I don't even need the dro stop drive motors. So I can say move forward three seconds. This will run both drive motors for three seconds, then stop. And that's it, guys. Um, I mean, that's pretty awesome, I think. If, if now, if I could say, now right swing turn, and then I could do move forward for one second, and then I could do left do I not have a left point turn oh I didn't create my point turns I just created swing turns okay well you know how to do that if you wanted to I'll do a left swing turn and these ones, there's no, no variable or no condition is uh, supplied. No, no additional information is, is given after that function, just uh, the, the swing turn itself. And, and I don't even know if I need to stop drive motors because after my swing turns, I have to stop those motors. So left swing turn, move forward, move forward for what? let's say uh, four seconds and then we don't even need that weight anymore because we have it and then a left swing turn and then uh, we'll wait three seconds and again 
if you wanted to set the so that the swing turn would go uh, would turn as uh, many times, you could say I want to turn one time. Um, let's let's do that. Okay, so I want to modify my swing turn so that when I specify a number here, that'll be the number of times it'll do a left swing turn. So if I do two, then I would be turning uh, left as a swing and then left again as a swing. Okay, the way that I could set that up is, I'll do it on the right swing one right here, is I'm going to say INT, because I don't need a decimal value, although I could, but for this we'll just do INT. So integer, uh, let's say number, you can't start off a variable with an actual number. So I have to just, I'll just type out number of turns. And then the weight will stay the same. Oh, or I could just do, if I know that 1.85 is one turn, then I could do 1.85 times the number of turns. Now, there's so many different ways you could do this, um, but this is just the way that I'm going to do it uh, for this uh, demonstration. Um, and then I'm going to copy this again right here. I'm going to say n is the number. Make sure your capitalization is always right. Of, it's the number of turns. And then down here, it's 1.85 times the number of turns. And so if I have a 1, then it's just going to be 1 times 1.85, which is what? 1.85. So it, it, would, it would just be 1 turn. So if I do a right swing turn, uh, I say I want to do it once, then that'll be a right swing turn once. Uh, if I want to do a left swing, swing turn twice, that'll be a left swing turn twice. Left swing turn once. Actually, let's get crazy. I'm going to do a three time. All right, and let's download the robot and see what happens. Okay, we're going to move forward. Do a right swing turn once. Got it. Move forward, do a left swing turn, and then move forward again for four seconds. Yikes. And then do a left swing turn three times. And there we go. All of that was really easy to program because I had all those functions set up already. And instead of having to copy and paste every time there says right swing turn, I'd have to have all that garbage, right swing turn stuff, down here. And then where it said, you know, if it said left swing turn, left swing turn, I'd have to copy a bunch of stuff. But this way, I could just say, and remember, I don't even need this stop drive motors. Right. And then right here, I could say uh, move forward again. And I want to move forward for three seconds. And it's so easy, guys. Once you have functions specified, and you've even gone for another step to add where you can add in the variables within the function, um, then you're really, really cooking with fire now.